guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I really am excited about today's guest, Roger Pearson. He's the Chief Business Education Officer. He's going to talk to us all about taxes, profitability, cash flow, um, everything you need to know, being aware of as a, a business owner. So, Roger, welcome. Well, thank you. I appreciate being here. Yeah. Um, tell people your story, your background, how you got started, and we'll get right into it. Okay. Well, you know, I've been in one sort of uh, small business, one way or another, for over 50 years now. Started my first one when I was 20. I found uh, there's a lot of things I didn't like doing, even though they made me money. Like, uh, I had a lawn care service, didn't care for that. Had a custodial service, didn't care for that at all. So <laughs> I've just kind of uh, uh, meandered around trying to find what I wanted because I wanted to originally be a teacher. You know, when I was in high school, I was going to be a teacher. I actually started going to college for that and found out that I couldn't deal with the politics of the school systems. <laughs> so I became a, a teacher in the business world instead, you know, uh, for companies. Uh, I've taught for IBM and companies like that for a while. But in the 90s, I was downsized out of three management positions because 90s were the decade of downsizing. Uh, a lot of people probably don't remember that anymore, but it was. And so I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do at that point. And somebody says, why don't you go take this tax class? You can do something part time uh, while you're waiting to decide what you want to do. That's what I did. And I found that I love doing it. So here, 23 years later, um, I'm still doing it. And uh, I love, and since I have a business background, I love helping small businesses and educating them. Yeah. What a, and I love this idea of, um, you know, the, what I love is uh, people love teaching and educating and people love helping others. And there's now, you don't have to go to specific industries. You can do it on your own. Um, one thing you talk about is uh, in your business education is keeping more of your small business profits in your pocket. How do you go about doing that? Well, the, the biggest problem that I found is uh, they don't really teach you how to run a business in school anymore. Um, in fact, they never really have. Uh, at one point, they actually, back in the dark ages, they, they taught you how to keep a checkbook, but that was about it. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I like many, so, so many others, I had to learn the hard way. And like so many first-time business owners that come in to see me at tax time, uh, they have a, a lot of shocks to their system because starting out, uh, you really don't know anything, you know? I've even had uh, business majors from college uh, in some of my classes, and they don't teach them the, the, the basics of small business in college even. They, they, they ask the professors about this stuff, and anyway, I was told that they tell them, well, you have to go learn that someplace else, and I, that was a total shock to me. So, I, you know, since I enjoy doing this stuff, I decided to start putting together resources for small businesses so I can uh, teach them that. Because there's there's three basic things you need to know if you're going to build a solid foundation under your business. And the first one is you need to be aware of all the different legal formats and, and how they protect you and don't protect you. All right. You need to know how to, how, to, how to organize your paperwork. And that's one of the biggest problems I see with small business people, especially starting right out, is having to teach them just how to organize their paperwork and how to keep it to give themselves the best advantage, okay? And the third, of course, is taxation uh, for each of the legal formats and how uh, you could use the tax laws to actually save you money. I mean, you can use the same tax laws that the big boys do, and there's no reason why you can't. It's just you you have to know what they are or you have to you have to know what they are enough to hire the right person to take care of it for you. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not about. Um, and one thing is, what what's interesting is, um, you hear this issue with uh, business owners all the time. Is like at the end of the year, it's like, oh, um, you know, uh, our business was profitable, uh, but then they don't have enough money to pay their bills or their taxes. You know, they have to, they get this big tax bill. Um, so talk about this this difference between um, cash flow and profitability. Well, cash flow is basically just the money you got coming in and the money you're going out. The biggest problem most people have, they don't know there's more going out than coming in and they don't realize it until they have to sit down at the end of the year and do their taxes. Uh, building a proper foundation under your business of course means that you do know what your net profit is at any one time during the year if you have it set up properly and that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, I love this idea. There's this um, really profit first and it's basically talking about this idea between cash flow and profitability and basically putting allocating buckets for different things and paying yourself first, having a allocation for taxes and, you know, expenses and um, which is, you know, really, really crucial. And again, this, okay. We also talk about this uh, protecting your business profits from the IRS. Again, this is not professional advice. We're just educating and, you know, we're not advocating. We want you to save money on taxes legally. So uh, talk about that. Well, most people, when they're just starting out, especially for the first time, they'll start out as a sole proprietorship. They're a single owner. They just have a small business. And what they don't realize, because you know they haven't educated themselves or hadn't had the opportunity to find the education, is that you can owe up to 50% of your profits in taxes. And after you pay that, you don't have any profit left, basically. Yeah. Uh, and that's the biggest shock to a lot of people. So, I mean, a proper structure uh, as you go along means that you can start out as a sole proprietorship, but then you may, if, when you get to a certain level of profitability to overset the cost of doing so, you may move up to a corporation, to an S corporation, where you can start shielding part of your money from that 15.3% payroll tax, which makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. I had one client this year that they owed a $6,500 tax bill on this because they became at home chef you know one of these private chefs and was very successful at it and um so i taught her how to restructure her business and use the tax laws so that instead of paying sixty five hundred dollars she actually got a thirty five hundred dollar refund which she was amazed at but that that's what makes me happy that's what i love doing that teaching people how to do that and help them do that yeah it's almost like um as an employee, if you're an active earner, like a W-2, basically you make whatever you, you, you're taxed first and you can spend or invest, whatever. But if you're a business owner, you can spend first and then, you, you know, there's legitimate legal deductions. And then what's left over, you pay taxes on, which is kind of, con you know, once you see that, it's like, you know, it's like it's your aha moment. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a real, real big aha moment for a lot yeah. of people. You know, and it's the same thing for a partnership. Yeah, uh, where where they have to pay their own payroll taxes, and uh, and so your people are so used when that W two. Well, that's all taken care of for them. So yeah. when they have first time, they have to do it for themselves. It's it's a real shock. Yeah, it's interesting. And 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 what's it, talk about this idea of what what type of income is the highest tech? Because you know, for example, a lot of the. Um, audience on this podcast are physicians they're basically they're w-2 and that's one of the most highest tax forms of income that you can get while you can you know if you're investment or dividend or royalty talk about that that um the tax difference w-2 is you can w you w-2 yourself if you're involved in an s corporation a c corporation or s corporation if you're in a partnership, and a lot of physicians are in partnerships, uh, I think the majority of physicians actually are in partnerships, and they're not allowed to W-2 themselves, uh -huh. although I've had a few try. And so it's a big difference tax-wise. It's a big difference tax-wise. Uh, everything flows down, and taxes are paid at the personal level when you have a partnership. On an S corporation, for instance, uh, you do W-2 yourself, and your payroll taxes are taken out of that. The rest of the profits come down, uh, distributions that you take come down as uh, investment income. And it's not subject to the 15.3%, which can make a huge difference. So there's definitely a lot of tax structures you can get into based on the various legal formats that you have. Yeah. Yeah, definitely consult a tax advisor, tax professional. You know, these are just so you understand the lingo, the terminology, but uh, don't do it on, don't do it by yourself. You know, don't go on the legal zoom and you know mess everything up 
you also have this idea of uh, ignoring these things will cost your business a lot. What should we pay, be paying attention to? Well, a lot of people think that, well, I don't have to learn all this stuff. I'll just go hire somebody and they take care of it for me. Yeah. You have no idea how many things I've had to straighten out from that particular attitude because you have to know this stuff yourself, even though you're not going to use it, even though you're going to hire somebody else to do it. You need to know the stuff yourself because just like if you owned a, a plumbing company and you went to hire a plumber, you would yeah. want to interview them, correct? Yeah. And you would have to know plumbing to be able to interview them correctly. And the same thing is is true when it comes to your finances and your taxes and, and business structures. You have to learn it yourself so that you can go interview that person that's going to be taking care of your money for you, which is the most important part. You yeah. need to earn it yourself. The other thing, the other reason you need to know this is really is that every once in a while in life, an opportunity comes across. For instance, if somebody came to you and said, oh, I found this great, great new thing. Would you like to go in as a partner with me? Okay. You can get yourself in a lot of problems if you just shake hands and say yes, because you need to know there's five different kinds of partnerships, you know, depending on what state you're in. Uh, you need to put together a partnership agreement and you don't have to legally, but it's a good idea. Pre, uh, a partnership agreement is like a prenup. You put in writing what happens if you start arguing and you want to split up and things like that. But if you've gone and you've pre-educated yourself to all these different kinds of formats, all the different kinds of opportunities out there, when something arises, an opportunity arises, you're going to know exactly the direction you need to go or who you need or what you need to talk to somebody about. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, always know what you're getting yourself into. Um, you know, know the lay of the land. Uh, it's really important. Do your due diligence. All of these things. Um, the other, and also, you know, so that you understand, you know, people are conning you or BSing you. Um, what is what's quite interesting is that um, you know you you have this experience and expertise. How, if people are interested in working with you, um, what business owners need to know the information you offer, you know, what kind of services you provide, um, et cetera. When I first uh, was thinking about this and I, you know, after about a decade of doing it, I saw people coming in and, you know, they'd ask, well, where can I learn all of this? And there's really, it's all out there. I mean, you, the internet's got everything, but how do you put it all together in a cohesive format that's easy to understand? So, I started out by uh, building some uh, uh, my corporate website, signaltechnologies.com, and I put a lot of free classes and things out there, and they're still there. But as time went along, I said, well, uh, something needed more in depth. So I got into uh, online course creation. I actually created a course, an online course that teaches you uh, all the, the pluses and minuses of all the legal formats how to organize yourself, how to keep your paper, what type of paperwork you need to keep, and then what the tax consequences are for choosing each type of legal format and what paperwork you need to keep for those different things. And so I put that all together and it's out there. And it also comes with a consult, private consulting. All of my online courses come with that. And then for somebody that just needs to sit and talk to somebody or like a little mentoring or something, I also offer a consulting, just plain old consulting. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, and what, what's the difference between, you know, what you do and versus a CFP, a financial planner? Uh, talk more about that. Ah, because I, I'm an IRS enrolled agent. An IRS enrolled agent in the tax world is, is like the PhD of the tax world. Uh, because we can represent people before the IRS, such as like it audits and things. I always tell when I represent somebody with an audit, I tell them, don't show up. Because you're going to say something that's going to get yourself into trouble. I know what to say and I know what I don't know. But the thing about it is, uh, CPAs can represent you. Lawyers can represent you. And they should if it's a, a criminal matter. There, by default, they can represent people before the IRS. And enrolled agent is the only representative that you can get that actually had to earn his credentials by taking tax classes and become an expert on tax law. You know, it takes three three-hour IRS tests to be, get your certification, and they're a doozy. Most people don't uh, get them the first time because they're very hard. They're, they're, it takes the entire three hours. I was surprised. Yeah. 
So, that, so if you want somebody that really, really knows tax law the best of all the different people that could represent you, an uh, enrolled agent is specializes in business returns would be what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, as, as we as we come to the end of this conversation, um, what would you like listeners to know more about you? How can they find you? I know you've got you're on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook, um, and and how they can reach out to you. Well, my, my main corporate site, of course, is Seagull Technologies. Seagull spelled like the bird. Seagull Technologies. Got, it has links to everything I do. It has links to my pay training. It has links to uh, my uh, YouTube channel and uh, some of the training I do there also. And I also have a free report. If people would like more about the foundational aspects of starting a business, if you go to seagull-free, there's a free report there you can download, and it goes into the different principles I've been talking about. And I explained them a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. For all the listeners out there, let's thank Roger for coming onto the show, um, really talking about, you know, finances and being more financially literate, uh, doing your diligence, business ownership versus uh, employee and all of the benefits that come with that as well as risks. And all of his resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Well, I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. I hope you really enjoyed that wonderful, inspirational, motivational piece. Again, if you, wherever you are listening, if you like it, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. We're on everywhere. Spotify, iTunes, Google, Amazon, Audible. And without much ado, be sure to Thank this show's sponsors, and we'll see you next week.